antenatal examination. So, uh, for example, have a look at the station. Your FY2 in antenatal clinic. Your patient is 36 weeks pregnant. Jane Green, G through gra Gravida 3, Para 2, no abortion. Uh, came to the hospital for her antenatal checkup. She had two normal vaginal deliveries. Do the antenatal examination and discuss the management with the patient. Okay. Nurse has already done the examination and she found it's a breach presentation. Okay, that's good. Right, so uh, what do you do? First, obviously, we'll take history. Patient is pregnant, so uh, uh, ask about the pregnancy, how the pregnancy is going on so far, is everything all right, uh, uh, any trouble in the pregnancy, and uh, what's the, uh, I mean, any, any, any special thing that you have decided about the delivery process? Uh, have you thought of the name for your kids? Have you done the shopping for your kids? I mean, just do a bit of good IPS as well, right? So that's the thing that you can do. So we'll ask a bit about antenatal history, right? If you have attended all your antenatal visits or not, whether there was any complication in any of the antenatal visits, whether your blood pressure was always okay or not, any problem and all. Is your first pregnancy? No, doctor, I already have two kids. How the delivery happened? It was normal delivery. You can ask these questions or you can use the information from the question as well. I can see from the notes that uh, you had two normal vaginal deliveries. Am I right? Yes. Uh, how are your kids? My kids are absolutely okay. Okay, that's good. So, I mean, this is something that you can ask. Yeah, that's the, that's the main thing that you need to do. So, asking about antenatal history, if everything is all right or not with this patient. Whenever you have got a pregnant female, whenever you have got pregnant female, uh, that too in the late pregnancy, say after 20 weeks or so, you don't have one patient. I would say you have got now two patients. Yeah, can I say I've got two patients now? One is the mother, obviously, and the other is the baby. So I would like you to ask one question for the baby as well. If you're able to feel the movements of the baby, that's the main thing. Ask one question for the baby. So ask about antenatal. How's your pregnancy going so far? Is everything all right? Uh, and you can ask about some question for preeclampsia and all that general question that all the uh, midwives and the doctors will be asking to a pregnant female in the late pregnancy. Any headache, any eye blurring of vision, nausea, vomiting, tummy pain, vaginal bleeding, ankle swelling, all those questions. And for IPS and all, uh, have you done the shopping for your child? Uh, any plan for the delivery? All those questions you can ask. And if you're able to feel the movements of the baby. So these are the questions that you can ask. Quick past medical history, if you would like to any past medical history, diabetes or hypertension, if you have got. That's it. I think two, three minutes of history should be enough. Then you go for the examination. So first is, uh, uh, you mentioned that I'm going to examine you for the purpose of examination. I would like you to undress uh, from where? From below the breast till mid thigh. Have a sharpened to ensure your privacy. May I proceed? Yes. Now, in this station, just remember one more thing. When you're doing antenatal examination, you have made sure that you have told the patient to empty the bladder as well. Emptying the bladder is very important. Uh, it's not like in every station, but uh, for example, if you're doing speculum examination, smear if you're taking, or if you're doing antenatal examination, you have to make sure uh, you always mention that you have to empty the bladder. Right? Then on the inspection, you can comment. I can see the like uh, the abdomen is distended. I can see uh, uh, the umbilicus is centrally placed. It's inverted and uh, there is no, uh, what do you say? I'm looking for uh, cutaneous signs of pregnancy. I'm looking for fetal movements if there is any. And there is no scar mark of any previous surgery. So that's something you can mention on the inspection. Then you have got the palpation. You compare the temperature. So you just check that the temperature of the uh, abdominal quadrants with the thigh, right? And then you check the tenderness. First, before the grips, you just go and make an S kind of formation and you just complete the whole of the uh, uh, abdominal examination and looking at the patient's face to see if there is any tenderness or not. That's the main thing, yeah? Okay, so that's done. Then you go for the grips. You have to go for uh, uh, lateral grip. You have to go for fundal grip. You have to go for pelvic grip as well. So first you do the lateral grips. See if uh, 
uh, what exactly it is. I mean, if it is a longitudinal line, if it is longitudinal line, you will see uh, one side you'll be able to feel the back of the baby, one side you'll be able to feel the limbs of the baby. That's the thing. And you can come in on the right lateral grip, I can feel this. On the left lateral grip, I can feel this. And then you feel what you can feel on the funnel and the pelvic ring. If you see the question, question says, uh, nurse has done the examination. It's a breach presentation. Mostly they give us breach because if it is kephalic, there's nothing that you can do in the management. Management is just wait and watch. So that's why mostly we have seen they give us breach presentation. So when you do the funnel grip, what you'll be able to find, you'll be able to find maybe the head. And when you go for a pelvic grip, what you'll be able to find in the pelvic grip, you'll be able to find the buttons, right? So that's something that you can mention. Then you can check the bundle height as well, and you can check for the fetal heart sound. So they will be giving you these fetoscope as well. So you can check the fetal heart sound as well. Right. Now, once you're done with this examination, you need to comment on a few things. You need to comment like if it is single or twin pregnancy. So it's a single pregnancy, single fetus. They need to comment on the line, whether it is longitudinal, whether it is oblique, or if it is transverse. So for example, you'll say it is longitudinal line. And then you comment on the presentation. So it's breach presentation. Then you can comment on the volume of Liker as well. So the thing is, if bundle height is normal, you can say volume of Liker seems to be adequate. Because what they do in the mannequin, they can actually put some air and they can make it 36 weeks pregnant as well, right? So uh, you can say volume of Liker seems to be adequate. Fundal height is 36 centimeter corresponding to the age of gestation. I can hear the fetal heart sound seems to be regular. That's it. So that's the comment that you can see. You can do that. You can see that in the video as well, the examination video, which you can go through with this uh, scanning this uh, QR code. So that's how we do the antenatal examination. Now, the patient's concern about the management. So she's 36 weeks pregnant. She said, I have got two normal vaginal deliveries already and I want to have normal delivery here in my third pregnancy as well. Can you do normal delivery in breach? Uh, the thing is, in the UK, what happens? Uh, she's 36 weeks. So you have to see if she's 36, but she has got two previous normal vaginal deliveries as well. So what's going to happen? We will wait for one week. You wait for one week. That's the main thing. Yeah. So what's going to happen here? What's going to happen in the management? I'll tell you. So the management would be, you have to see if she is priming or if she has already given birth, she is multi. See, so the patient is primary, she is pregnant the first time and it is 36 weeks. What are you gonna do? You will try ECV, external kephalic version. You try to rotate the baby. ECV when now at 36 only, if she's primary, 36 weeks, you try ECV first time. If it is successful and uh, now the baby is in kephalic presentation, absolutely okay. If it was not successful, I will try ECV again. Not on the same day, it's on the some other day. If that is also not successful, what I'm going to do, I will go for cesarean section. That's the management. Our patient has already had two normal vaginal deliveries. And now she's 36 weeks. So what's going to happen? I will wait. I will wait for one week. So now it's 37 weeks. I waited for one week. If it is kephalic, done. My job is done. If it is still breach, what is going to happen? Then only you will try ECV. You will give a trial of ECV. If it is successful, it's not. If not, then you will give another trial of external kephalic version on some other day. If it is still not successful, I'll go for cesarean section. That's how it is done. Another thing, if it is multi, but the previous deliveries were done through cesarean section, am I going to try ECV? The answer is no, there is no ECV. Go for cesarean section. That's it.
So that's your management. Now, our case, she is 36 weeks. She had two normal vaginal deliveries. So wait and watch for one week. First of all, your baby is absolutely fine. There is nothing wrong with your baby because when you explain it to the patient that your baby is in breach presentation, she might feel that, oh, there is something wrong with my baby. So you need to reassure her. There's nothing wrong. So usually what happened in the delivery process in the later part of the pregnancy, usually the baby's head is down there. So it's easy for the delivery process. But in your case, in your this pregnancy case, what's happening, baby's head is here and the buttocks are there. So this is what we say is a breach presentation. In terms of baby, there's nothing wrong. Your baby's absolutely fine. It can happen. It's a normal process, right? Now, what's going to happen is most probably, maybe your baby will turn on its own. So we'll wait for, an, for a week. And if it turns, then absolutely okay. If not, then we can try to rotate your baby manually. What we call is as external cephalic version. Mostly it's successful. If not, we can try it again on some other day. Or else we might go for cesarean section. But this patient, no doctor, I want to have normal delivery only. I can see you want normal delivery. That's okay. So, but the thing is, uh, in breach, sometimes what happens is uh, sometimes you'll see the baby is in footling presentation. Sometimes the neck is hyperextended and all. So in those cases, we have to go for cesarean section probably. But I think it's uh, very early for us to have this chat on this. Uh, for the time being, for the time being, uh, what we can do is uh, let's wait and hopefully your baby will turn on its own in a week. Right, so that's the thing, that's the thing you can say. And you know, when the baby's in breach presentation, is it gonna create any problem for the mother? The answer is not really, but uh, sometimes what happens is when the head is here, so it pushes the diaphragm up, so the breathlessness, shortness of breath will be a bit more, and when the limbs are there down there, it will be ticking on the bladder. So mother might have to go for the loo a bit more often. Minor things, but uh, otherwise breach is absolutely normal, there's nothing. To worry about it, right? So that's what we have got in antenatal examination. So make sure you reassure, reassure, and reassure this patient. All right.